Good morning. Let's try it again. And welcome to worship this morning on the day of Pentecost. So today you're going to hear in some of our lessons about the Holy Spirit coming to each of us and giving each of us a variety of gifts. I want to start this morning by thanking Ray Milkey for sharing with us a message this morning. I also want to acknowledge anyone who has served in the military and served our country. Could you please stand? Give them a round of applause. Thank you for your service to our country. We greatly appreciate it. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this morning that we had last week, this coming week, that we want to celebrate? So time for celebration. Okay, all right. So I recently just completed my first year of lay school, and it was a wonderful year of growth, of learning about the Bible, learning things I never knew, um, faith growing. Um, it was just wonderful. So if anyone ever wants to talk to me about it and join, I'd be happy to talk to them. So highly recommend it. One of the classes we had to take was Faith and Spirituality. And the book we, were, we read this year is called Faith, The Yes of the Heart. And it is an awesome book. And there are just so many things in there that I learned that really touched on the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to share some of those things with you so that it's not just me who gets to hear all this great news from God and the Holy Spirit. I get to share it with all of you. So I'm going to read a few little, little portions to you. It is the spirit that filled Jesus and overflowed his heart and life. It is the same spirit that Jesus gives to those who receive him, follow him, and believe in him. It is the spirit that sanctifies, makes us more than we have been, and empowers us to know and share God's truth, love, and power. It is the gift of the Spirit that initiates and empowers our growth in grace. It is that gift that our Heavenly Father offers to give, not just once, but to renew and to increase. We can hardly believe that God really does enter and empower people like us through the Holy Spirit. Yet, the church exists only because God poured out his Holy Spirit on all people who would receive it, who heard the word with their hearts. Even the most ordinary member of the church has an extraordinary calling. Each and every one of us is asked to be a light in the darkness, a voice in the emptiness, a hand reaching into loneliness. Each of us is needed to share our joy and to add our strength as part of the healing of the world and creation from wherever we stand within it. I'm going to read that one again. Even the most ordinary member of the church has an extraordinary calling. Each and every one of you is asked to be a light in the darkness, a voice in the emptiness. Take your hand and reach it to someone who is lonely. Each of you is needed to share your joy and your strength as part of the healing of the world and creation from wherever you stand, wherever God planted you. The spirit of life is a, light, is a spirit of fire, a wind, a breath of fresh air. The spirit moves continually. And remember this, the final, final message from Acts today. A magnificent promise that is given to each and every one of us. You will receive power when this Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. 
Let us pray. Dear awesome God, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit that lives in each of us, empowers and calls each of us to a different ministry, a different purpose in your world. And let each of us hear your calling today and know your path for us that we can touch others with your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us begin with the thanksgiving of baptism. I'm going to ask everyone to stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and has raised us for, with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Let us join together to pray. Let us pray. O oh Lord, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we begin worshiping our Holy Father by welcoming the Holy Spirit with us today. Listen to him. Listen for his calling. He is right there with you each and every moment. Oh, 
Our first reading today is found in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Here we get to hear how the Holy Spirit came to the people then and to us now. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was be bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Amalites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with the new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3b through 13. Now this is where we hear how the Holy Spirit works in each of us and gives each of us our own unique talents and gifts that he wants each of us to share with those around you. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one, by this one Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one, and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand now for the reading of the gospel. 
The Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of many, they are retained. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We have a children's message. Any little ones? I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul be. I just want to be morning, Annabelle and Piper, right? Okay. So now, do you ever get hungry for chocolate? Do you ever get hungry? Anybody there ever get hungry for chocolate? Yes, everybody there. Okay, so you ever had any M&Ms? Have you ever had M&Ms? M&Ms are good, aren't they? You know, kind of interesting as Kay was talking about varieties, you know, M&Ms come in varieties too, don't they? <laughs> What's that? I have some M&Ms. You have some M&Ms on the table. Well, guess what? You might have some more. <laughs> so we've got M&Ms here. Now, are there many M&Ms in that package? Um, three. <laughs> the three. You know what? I found out there's actually six. <laughs> and would you believe that's a serving size, six? <laughs> so if you were hungry for chocolate, would this be enough to satisfy your hunger for chocolate, would that be enough? That might be enough, but you know what? They make M&Ms in bigger packages <laughs> so that if you would want more chocolate, you could have more chocolate. Do you think that would be enough to satisfy you? Anybody out there, would that be enough? I, I know my brother would say no, and so would my husband. Okay, so... As I said, M&Ms come in different varieties. They also come in even bigger sizes. So, now if that wasn't enough, this would be enough. Would this be enough? <laughs> would that be enough, Piper? Do you think you'd have... <laughs> I lost my Annabelle. Do you think that would be enough? I bet you could share some of that, couldn't you? Yeah. We have M&Ms in our house all the time, so everybody knows where this is going. <laughs> okay, so Ray is going to talk about the word enough today in his message. So can you tell me what this word says? Annabelle, can you read? Uh, love. love. That says love. So does Jesus give us love? Does Jesus give us love? Yes, Jesus does give us love. He gives every one of us love. So if all Jesus gave us was love, would that be enough? It probably would, but you know what? Jesus is so amazing that he gives us things other than love. Okay? Peace, hope, direction, and comfort. So Jesus gives all that as well. And those are all wonderful things. So these are things that Jesus gives us as well as love. But you know that, don't you think that would be enough from Jesus? But guess what? Jesus gives us even more. Can you read any of this? Do you know what the color green is, Annabelle? Do you know what that, that's a really big word. Forgiveness, can you read that word on the bottom? Guidance. So Jesus gives us love, peace, hope, direction, comfort, forgiveness, guidance. That would be enough too, wouldn't it? But no, Jesus keeps going. He gives us more. Okay, can you read the words in yellow? 
that's really patience, yeah. grace. Patience and grace. So Jesus keeps giving us more. So it's like Jesus says enough, but he just keeps giving us more and more. And Jesus, Jesus is just amazing that way. So, and the other thing that all these things that Jesus gives us, you know what he wants us to do with all those? Use them, right, and share them. So I am going to share some of my M&Ms. I don't think Ray would be happy if I gave that big bag away. <laughs> so I'm going to let, and then to the congregation, when you're done, I actually have several packages of M&Ms out in the great room so everybody can have help themselves to M&Ms after service. <laughs> and feel free to take a couple and share. So you, each, you can take two. Those are caramel. Caramel, we have plain caramel, peanut, and peanut butter. So you can take two. Okay, hang on just a second, I want to say a prayer. You want to take two. Okay, and then let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being enough in our life and for all you give us every day. Amen. Okay. Okay, you can go back to your seats now. Thank you. Pentecost is a Jewish harvest festival that, mankind, that marked the 50th day after the Passover. And we celebrate the Holy Spirit as God's presence within and among us. In the book of Acts, the Spirit arrives in a rushing wind and flame, bringing God's presence to all the people. During the Passover cedar meal, between different food courses, they say prayers of thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to praise God for his abundance towards us. And there's a Jewish word, deenu, and it's basically translate to, it would have been enough. And some of the verses go like this, it would have been enough for the word and wisdom of God to have been born in flesh, deenu. It would have been enough for the word and wisdom it would have been enough for the word to grow to adulthood and share his stunning parables with God's gracious activity in the world. Daniel. It would have been enough for Jesus to say, Father, forgive them. Daniel. It would have been enough for Jesus to die on the cross for us. Daniel. It would have been enough that he rose again in blessing and not vengeance. Daniel. As you can see, God never quits giving for us. And it's always been this way. He could have created the world and walked away. Daniel. He could have handed the keys of Edom to Adam and Eve, and it would have been enough. Daniel. After eating the forbidden fruit, he could have turned his back on mankind but he chose instead to save us from ourselves. All things created by God, he shares with mankind, each and every one of them would have been enough, Daniel. He gives life and offers spiritual guidance and then gives us the choice if we want to accept it, Daniel. It would have been enough for Jesus to give us hope, it would have been enough for Jesus to give us love, peace, forgiveness, direction, comfort, guidance. Talk about a gift that keeps on giving. From the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 24, and it tells the story when Moses led the people out of Egypt, about 600,000 of them. And Moses needed help in leading the people, so he gathered 70 of his elders around him. And the Lord came upon them and shared some of Moses' spirit with them. They were able to help Moses' prophecy. And now the meaning of prophet is one who is able, with God's help, 
to tell God's message correctly. And Moses has a young boy named Joshua as an assistant. And he complains about who has received the prophecy. And Moses rebukes him for insinuating that God's gift should be limited. With God, there is more than enough to go around, more than enough resources, more than enough blessings, and more than enough love, and more than enough of God's spirit. When I was preparing today's message, I came upon this definition of fairness. Fair isn't giving each one the same thing. Fair is giving each one what they need. Now try making that argument when you're handing out homemade cookies to kids and they're not all exactly the same size. Or when you're handing out scotcheroos and there are the larger ones from the middle or the edge pieces with less chocolate. And God had this dilemma covered in the 10th commandment. Thou shalt not covet, or in modern language, desire another's property. And I remember holiday meals when we had our feet under my mom's table. There was usually always two kinds of meat, potatoes, green beans or corn or both, two kinds of dressing, homemade cranberries, home canned pickles, cheese, squash with marshmallows on top, sweet potatoes, fresh bread or rolls, and then a couple of desserts on the side. Always good and plenty of everything. In later years, when boyfriends or girlfriends started showing up, you could see that worried look. What if there isn't enough? And generally, we would be eating leftovers for days to come. Sometimes we may think that God's table will run out of grace, love, and patience, or understanding because we've asked too much. Or we might think there isn't enough room within God's grace for one more mistake. Yet God is God of abundance. God's kingdom promises plenty for all. God's table never runs out. And guess what? There is plenty left over. My dog, Ziva, loves to follow me around the yard or just to be outside, entertaining herself with different smells and sounds. And when I quit moving, she's right there by my side with a stick or a chewed up frisbee, wanting to be played with or just to make sure she has my attention, up until she hears a chipmunk or a squirrel chatter and then she's off. And I wonder if that's how God deals with my following in this way, wishing I'd stick closer, but knowing that I'm prone to wander. Yes, sometimes I'm right there, walking alongside the great lover of my soul and listening and learning. And other times, though I'm at a distance, distracted by some new sparkly thing or another, and occasionally I just want to be left alone to ramble, but still know that I'm being watched over. And because God loves me, I am. Amen.
Please rise as you are able and let us share together the faith that we all believe in by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Following our shepherd's teachings, we come with a humble and thankful heart. Spirit of life, you breathe energy into all things. Guide us to eliminate polluted air, pesticides in our soil, and trash in our waterways. Hear us, O God. Spirit of comfort, Thank you for hearing our prayers, even when our situations remain the same. Grant us the grace to trust you, and thank you for your gracious help. May you continue to comfort those who are experiencing pain of any kind. Today, we especially pray for Al, Anne, Becky, and Beverly, Corinne, Dave, David, Dennis, and Doug, Evelyn and Gloria, Jaden, Jasmine, Jerry, Joyce, Judy, Karen, and Carol, Christy and Larry, Lois, Lynn, and Nathan, Patty, Parker, Scott, and Terry and Will. Hear us, O oh God. Spirit of hope, as we remember all those who have served our country, may we never take for granted the sacrifices made to secure our freedoms. Hear us, O oh God. Spirit of strength, we ask for your help in protecting all those in abusive relationships and victims of human trafficking. May those impacted be given strength to break free from the predators and brought to justice. Hear us, O oh God. Spirit of comfort, you give us this day, one day at a time. 
to live a life of service to you. Help us to live each day we are given, helping others where we are able and with the gifts we are given. Hear us, O God. Spirit of imagination, you give us a mind to dream, a heart to hope, and a faith to believe what is possible. Guide us to find answers to the impossible dreams that will improve St. John's mission of service. Hear us, O God. Let us join together as we say our last petition as one with everlasting thanks and joy for your love and forgiveness. We ask you to be with us till we meet again. This week, help us to take every opportunity be, to be thankful for the blessings of each day. Help us to pay attention to how best we can be a gift to others. May we approach each day with soul, serving others, uplifting lives. We ask all in the name of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated as we receive our morning offering. Let us join together in the offering prayer. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self, we give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And let us continue in prayer as we pray the prayer that our Father taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, I have quite a few announcements this morning. Um, first of all, just a reminder that we have started the summer Sunday worship or summer worship schedule. So service will be at 930 throughout the entire summer through Labor Day weekend. Um, locations will vary throughout the summer. Um, so just show up at 930 and We'll, someone will get you directed where you need to go. But also with that, Wednesday nights are going to be at 6 o'clock now over at Veterans Park. So throughout the summer, worship will be at Veterans Park at 6 o'clock. Um, Veterans Park is over across the road from Premier Community Bank. And this week is their first kickoff. So they are having a fellowship at 530, um, a light meal consisting of a sandwich and beverage. So if you want to come and worship God and the beauty of the outdoors. Hopefully it'll be a beautiful day and come and join fellowship, you know, with your, your fellow um, people and enjoy company with them and then you can worship the Lord at six o'clock starting this Wednesday. Um, we also need Sunday school teachers. 
Um, so their goal is they really want to get a large group so that you only have to teach once a month. So if you are interested, we really need um, you to, to reach out to the office so that we can continue that ministry here at St. John's. Communion will be offered next Sunday, June 11th at 9.30 and Wednesday, June 21st at 6, so keep that in mind. Uh, there is also Zion Church in Caroline is offering a bus trip to see the Ark Encounter um, and the Creation Museum. I think that's down like Kentucky-ish way or something, so it's supposed to be really spectacular. I heard a talk on it on the radio one time. Um, so June 29th through July 2nd, there are 16 open spots on the bus. So if you're interested in going, the bus ride, hotel stay, and two meals a day are covered in the cost. It's $400. <clears throat> and if you're interested, please contact Kathy Malig. And the phone number is 715-851-4825. For those of you that are here, I'll just leave this up here. If you want to write down the phone number, you can come and peek at it. And then just remember, um, you know, the kitchen and all the amazing people, things they do in the kitchen when we have our service and fellowship to everybody. But sometimes when we're done, we have a little extra. So they love if you can donate cottage cheese, sour cream, and ice cream containers to put those extras in to send home to people. Um, they're only looking for those types, so because then they're uniform and they stack easily. So if you have anything, bring it into the, the kitchen here. There are dishes still left um, over from previous use. Um, check the supply closet for any of your escaped dishes and canning jars that you're looking for. So any other announcements that I missed? All right. Well, as we close our service... And we just get to realize how lucky we are to come together, to be able to worship our Father who gave us our Holy Spirit, to live with us and be with us every single moment of every day. So let join, lift your voices as we join together in praising our Holy Father by singing, Bless the Lord. Thank you. 
Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. And all God's people said? Amen. Remember, life is difficult, so? Pray hard. Go and have a blessed week.